CBS Sports, tradition, champions, and the pulsating world of the CBS Sports family. CBSSports.com, where fans live the game. And the CBS Sports Network. This is CBS Sports. By now, you've heard all about Kellen Moore and his Boise State Bronco football team. And chances are you have a pretty strong opinion about them, about their blue turf, and about how good you think they really are. But the fact is, time and time again, they have taken down national powers on the big stage. And tonight in Las Vegas, a Bronco win will be number 46 for Kellen, making him the winningest college quarterback of all time. Boise State and UNLV is presented to you by Discover Card. Well, a few hours ago, Kellen Moore and his number five Boise State Broncos pulled up here to Sam Boyd Stadium, just a bit over 10 miles from the Las Vegas Strip, hoping to light up the scoreboard. Like the show going on down the road. Sam Boyd Stadium, the place to be on CBS Sports Network tonight as the hometown UNLV Rebels play host to the fifth ranked Boise State Broncos in HD by LG. Let's take a look at the BCS standings driven by Dodge Journey. Stanford actually jumping Boise State in this week's BCS standings. A slow start, but the Cardinal winning on the road at Oregon State and of course, LSU and Alabama playing one for the ages right now in Tuscaloosa. Aaron Taylor, James Bates, that's a great game, but you know what? We've got a great quarterback, a special guy, and what a treat it has been to watch number 11, Kellen Moore, compete for these Boise State Broncos. He's unbelievable, and the bottom line is we have a chance to possibly see football history made here tonight if Kellen Wynn gets his 46 win, giving him the most of all time in college football. When you look about this kid, what you like about him is that he was a coach's kid. He sees the entire field. He's a great decision maker. But tonight, folks, you're going to see somebody that is a thing of beauty the way he locates the football. He anticipates, he throws guys open, and he seems to save his best performances when the stage is its biggest. It's a sophomore quarterback, a starter for UNLV, who lost his job only to earn it back, leading a charge to come from behind win last week over Colorado State. We saw him just yesterday, and he's having fun. Said he hasn't had this much fun since he went 20. 28 no his last two years of high school. He looked like he was still in high school. He's so young when he walked in the office. He made a tremendous play at the end of that ball game, really anticipating the blitz and using his feet. Caleb Herring will have to throw the football tonight to be successful against his defense. But this is a pistol offense for the Rebels. They run the football. That's why, James, the offensive line, three true freshmen and two juniors, really has to step up tonight to be able to give Herring time and some room for those backs to run against a very active Bronco front. That's the matchup of this game. Brooke Collins joins us on the field tonight and Brooke even though Kellen Moore was a finalist for the Heisman last year and a hopeful this year I'm guessing he didn't rent out a billboard on this strip this year did <laughs> I do not think so James I really don't you know when Kellen is asked about breaking the record he always deflects to his teammates saying Thomas Burke could be the winningest center or George Yaka could be the winningest safety he really isn't taking the hype very seriously this week in fact he won the energy award given out by coach Peterson for his riveting dance moves to Van Halen at practice. He says it again and again. It is not about winning awards. It's about winning games, James. All right, Brooke. Anybody that can dance to Van Halen music deserves an award in my book. Tonight, the opening kickoff is brought to you by Bud Light. And here we go. UNLV won the coin toss, but deferring to the second half. So we will get a chance to see Kellen Moore and that offense of Boise State to start things off. Here's Chase Lansford to get it going. And a short kick, DJ Harper 
the backup running back is twisted up at the 35 yard line. DJ Harper at one point, it was co-starters with Doug Martin, who may be one of the most unsung heroes in college football. We all know about Kellen Moore, but maybe we don't hear enough about his running back, Doug Martin, the senior from Stockton, California. As Brooke told you, a lot of other seniors that Kellen Moore is quick to give credit to. And one very important senior back there with his hands on his knees, the starting tailback. And Martin will get the first go. And a gain of about three yards into that defensive front of UNLV. There he is, the senior quarterback, four-year starter from Prosser High School in Prosser, Washington, where he played for his dad. Again to the ground and a couple of hard pops for Martin falling backwards. And Tyler Gaston in on his second tackle already, the defensive tackle. Here's our Buick starting lineup, starting with that big, bad Bronco front. Keep your eye on Thomas Bird. The center does a great job from that spot. Been a little banged up this year, but makes a great job. And Tyler Shoemaker, their go-to guy, number 89, he's all over the place. A lot of touchdown catches this year. Here's a third and five for Moore. A four-man rush. Little bit of pressure thrown low. And a three and out. Nate Carter on the defense, the starting middle linebacker. And Voldevine was Moore's intended target. That's exactly what you want to be able to do when you're at home and it's homecoming. To be able to stop this high-powered Boise State offense, you have to be able to get pressure. That's a great job of a three and out, forcing one of the most potent offenses in the country off the field in three plays. That gives you the momentum and the confidence you need early on in this ball game to carry it through. We've got three. Broncos split up top and two Covering was down my, in the middle of the field. This was my mic open. Big, big fake punt territory, but punted away by Elkin. Michael Johnson late to take a big hop, and he takes a pop as soon as he gets the ball. Good job holding on to the rock by the senior and Lee Hightower, the safety, down there to lay the lumber. Oh, Michael Johnson maybe wants something to have happen. Good job fielding the ball. Good job to be able to hang on to it because Hightower brought the wood on that one. But ball security is the most important thing, and that was a good job by the Rebel team on that one. A 45-yard punt. Elkin has been fantastic this year. And there's a freshman, Beyonce Bradford, 6-foot, 210-pounder, the regular starter, Tim Cornette, one of five suspended for this big game. Little misdirection and the freshman dives forward for about two. I Loka, the safety on the stop. Let's take a look at those Buick starting lineups for UNLV. UNLV, we talked about how young they were up front. Keep your eye on Brett Boyko, number 69. 6'7, 300 pounds was a quarterback last year in high school. And in the backfield, keep your eye on Philip Payne, number four, the wide receivers, the all-time leader in touchdowns with 25 for the Rebels. First pass of the night is complete for Herring. Not much there, though, as he gets it out to his tight end, Austin Harrington. Good job defensively. Let's take a look at those Broncos over on the defensive side. Boise State across the front is very, very talented and active. Crawford and McClellan off the edge and Billy Wynn. A lot of NFL scouts here watching those guys tonight. Ryron Houghton, Tevis Good in that middle side. In the back end, George Iloka, number eight, is a playmaker. He fills the alley and is tremendous in run support. Just throws it out of bounds over the head of his head coach, Bobby Houck. And so UNLV, after a big three and out by their defense against this high-powered offense of Boise State, can't do anything but go three and out as well. Little pressure there late that time. We talked about that young offensive line having to be able to give Herring some time to be able to throw the football. You don't want to get down behind so these defensive linemen can pin their ears back and come at you. 
beat you, pinning your ears back. These returners for Boise State, very athletic. A short punt that won't even make it to midfield. Kellen Moore dangerous enough. His second trip out tonight, he will have 50 yards to work with. Tonight's prime time matchup, number five, Boise State and UNLV, brought to you by Discover Card. College football on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by Discover Card. It pays to discover. By Buick. See real stories of human achievement on the Buick Human Highlight Reel at NCAA.com slash Buick. And by Verizon, America's largest and most reliable wireless network. Welcome back. Still photos of Kellen Moore's first career start, August 30th, 2008, versus Idaho State. The Broncos winning that one 49 to 7, and nothing's changed inside the face mask. Still the baby face quarterback. But 44 wins later after that one. Kellen Moore comes in with a 45 and 2 record as a starter tied with former Texas quarterback Colt McCoy. One win tonight, and he will become the winningest quarterback in college football FBS history. Another record broken on CBS Sports Network earlier tonight by Case Keenum, who passed up Timmy Chang for career passing yards. 56-13, Houston stays undefeated and keep on rolling atop the Western Division in Conference USA. And another incomplete pass for Moore, and it's a third down and long. Yeah, that time Kellen Moore was trying to hit Tyler Shoemaker, and that was a perfect example of his anticipation. He put that ball right on Shoemaker, but Shoemaker waited to the last moment to turn his head around and wasn't expecting it, but that was a great throw. Doug Martin remains the lone back, will switch sides. Just a three-man rush for the Rebels, fouled in there. This time it's caught by Shoemaker. First down, the chains will move for the first time tonight. That time UNLV only rushed three players, dropping eight. And a lot of times you have a lot of people back in that zone, but it's also easy to find holes in that zone. And that's one of the things that Boise State does so well is find the weaknesses in your defense. There's the giddy up for the offense and James Dunlap who's coming off of a career day in the win over Colorado State drops Doug Martin for no game. I got to be honest James I'm really liking what I'm seeing out of UNLD UNLV's defense early on in this ball game. They're playing physical and they're flying to the football. Here they'll rush four. Not much pressure though taking advantage of it. Kellen Moore Shoemaker again with the reception back to back catches for shoe and back to back first downs down inside the tent. One of the things that Boise State does so well is attack the holes and the seams in your defense. Great protection up front by that offensive line and just on the crossing route. Great job hitting Shoemaker on that post. Boise will try and attack that soft part of the defense all night long. Moore has only been sacked three times this season. This time it's Burroughs, the speedster Burroughs does just that. Burroughs through the UNLV defense as he dives down to the five yard line. A four yard gain, second down and goal. A tackle going to John Lotulele, who gets his first start tonight. The junior linebacker filling in for Tani Maka, who had really, really started to come on. One of the five suspended. Yeah, no question. He's tied for first on this team in tackles and leads them in interceptions. They'll miss him. I backs behind the big fullback, Koch. Doug Martin gets a couple, so it will be a third down and goal now from the two yard line. One of the things that's always impressed me about Boise State and what they're able to do is the way they call plays and they attack and make you defend every inch of the field. They're exceptional down here in the red zone. 39 trips. They've scored 28 touchdowns at 72%. You're going to win a lot of ball games if you're that efficient down low here. Offset eye. Old Devine in motion. Play action pass for the lefty Moore. And so much time. Gabe Linehan finally comes out, gets open, and the Broncos strike first here in Vegas. We talked about Kellen Moore seeing the entire field James that was his fourth read he went through his progressions he was patient he had the time 
and found the receiver open for the touchdown. That's a savvy vet move right there. Joe Southwick, the holder, a backup quarterback, maybe the guy of the future, puts it down for Goodell, who was nine for nine in the record setting win over Colorado State a few weeks ago. Second drive of the night. Moore takes it 50 yards and completes the pass to Linehan. Touchdown pass number 25 this season for Kellen Moore. He hits his big tight end, Gabe Linehan, and it's seven to nothing. Well, let's go back and take a look at that last touchdown. We talked about Kellen Moore's ability to see the whole field. He's looking at Shoemaker. He's not there. Efa, he's not there. He's covered. He comes off, goes over to Linehan, which is his third read. That's having a great feel and being a good decision maker at the quarterback level. Very good kick cover team behind Trevor Harmon, who boots it away for the first time tonight. And here's a great returner. It's Bradley Randall. Randall and Purvis, both outstanding returners. Purvis, actually 98 yards he took it against Colorado State to answer a big momentum-killing touchdown and the come-from-behind win. And it was this guy, the sophomore Caleb Herring, who had given up the starting job to the JUCO transfer, Sean Riley. Riley started the game, but Herring came in and had his, the best game of his UNLV career. And, and that's what a guy that went 28-0 in high school, like we talked about in the open, he's used to being successful. So he expects himself to be able to go out there and succeed, and that's exactly what he did last week. Philip Payne, bottom of the screen, and looking that way the whole time is Herring. Oh, and you don't see that very often, the big, strong hands of Philip Payne unable to bring it in it would have been the first first down of the night for the rebels that was actually a pretty good throw by caleb herring he was a little late on the throw and that'll show you the difference between a caleb herring and a kellen moore kellen moore would have thrown that ball well before Payne would have been out of his break but very good accuracy early early on in this ball game for the young quarterback as promised by offensive coordinator rob Fen fennessy if Payne has single coverage with no help up top they will go to him but the pass incomplete. Second and 10 now into the ground. And the freshman hit hard. Deonze Bradford was rocked by Byron Hout, who doubled his tackle total with 18 against Air Force. Jonathan Brown, rather, I beg your pardon, the sophomore from Alameda on the stop. Byron Howe's a good player. Jonathan Brown actually dropped the absolute wood on that one. If you look at third down, you have to have first and second down success, which UNLV did not. So they put themselves kind of behind the eight ball on this third down. Let's see if they convert. Trying to answer a 50-yard drive by the Boise State offense. And there it is. First down. Chains will move. It's Mark Fairfield. What a big strike, A.T. Everybody in the house knowing how powerful and potent this offense for Boise State. They score, and a big first down. Yeah, well, when in the office yesterday, he said one of the routes he likes to throw is that double post. They call it a seal concept, where they put some pressure on that safety. Talking to Herring, he says, I like that throw. I've got a lot of confidence in that throw, and it's no surprise that this coaching staff and Rob Hennessy Fennessy, excuse me, go to that early on in the ball game to get the confidence up of the young man. Fennessy has two tights in there. They'll block on that left side for their quarterback and on the read. A good read by the sophomore, and there is a late flag. Everybody in the house wearing scarlet and gray wanted it, and they'll finally get it. It's Fabus. First of the foul. Cox, number 16, defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. And the horse collar tackle, Cedric Fabus, the guilty party. Here we'll see it at the end of the run. James, that's that even front that they liked, and they said when they saw that they wanted to be able to attack the boundary with some zone read concepts. They said Boise's very good, they're very multiple, but they do have some tendencies, and they were going to try and attack those tendencies, and that was a perfect example, attacking that team into the boundary on that last one. It was a similar type of run for Herring against Colorado State late in the game, the sophomore from Moreno Valley, California. Michael Atkinson, one of many horses up front on this defensive line on the tackle there. 
I'll tell you what, this UNLV offensive line, they're young, three true freshmen going against a very salty Boise State defensive front. But what I loved watching these guys on film, they play chippy, they play nasty, they don't take anything from anybody. And so far, early on in this ballgame, they're doing a pretty good job. Blitz is picked up, and here's Payne, his first catch of the night. First down, UNLV, their third of the drive. Quaylen, Ewing, Burton on the coverage. UNLV's got some moxie going right now. A lot of confidence. Keep your eye on Philip Payne down here at the bottom of the screen. Cuts in right behind the safety. Soft coverage that time, but it was the motion that brought the safety down, clearing the space for Payne to be able to get inside there. And so far, UNLV's defense, or excuse me, offense, is being able to find some holes in a Boise State defense that's usually pretty stout against the pass. Sixth in the nation, only allowing 166 yards through the air per game. First down for Heron. He'll dance a little bit, tuck it, and go! Caleb Heron diving forward for another first down. Aaron Tevis finally there to get him, but the damage is done. UNLV knocking on the door. Well, talking to the coaching staff yesterday, they said Caleb Herring is a street baller. He's a street shooter. He's the one you take your threes. When he's hot, he's hot. When he's not, well, he's young. Tonight, so far, he's hot. He's hitting those threes and raining from the outside. That was a huge play for Caleb Herring, the young man making with his legs. He's got two. Solid receivers up at the top of your screen. Both seniors, Michael Johnson and Philip Payne. To the ground, to the freshman. Makes a guy miss and powers through. Touchdown, UNLV. Deonze Bradford from 13 yards out. How about that young, nasty offensive line you were talking about? They don't know what not supposed to happen. They don't know game. anything that they're not supposed to be able to do what they're doing tonight. And that's what's so good about being young and being feisty. And that's exactly what this team needed to do is get some confidence. And when you can run the football as an offensive lineman, you feel good. And right now, UNLV feels pretty dang good. In a prime time matchup between the fifth ranked Boise State Broncos and the UNLV Rebels brought to you by Discover Card, UNLV has just answered. We'll be right back. Well, we told you at the top of the show that it was this offensive line that was going to have to take control. These are three true freshmen over here doing a good job of being able to create some running room. Missed tackles by Boise State, usually a pretty good sure tackling team right there. George Iloka wraps up around Bradford's legs but couldn't get him down. And when you're an offensive lineman, when you have young guys up there that are pushing the pile and mashing guys, that's exactly what you want early on this ballgame. This is a run first team for the Rebels. And when you can get it going on the ground, and Deontay Bradford with Tim Cornette out has done a mighty fine job filling in. As we showed you our Russell scoring drive, how about this kick by Chase Lansford? The punter pins it back there. No return. We'll start at the 20. There's a flag down, but that's not because the ball went out of bounds. Went to the end zone first. We'll hang on before we take it to a break. A little bit of confusion here on the field ball did go past the pylon into the end zone and out the side of the end zone. So that is not the issue. And just to wrap up that Russell athletic scoring drive, that's the second career touchdown for this freshman. Deontay Bradford. After the play, personal foul, kicking team number 87. That would be a force in the free kick. First down. We'll look at that when we come back, and that is unfortunate. Bobby House, Trey Mays just killed the momentum in this ball game. So here's Bobby House, the second year coach, having a talk with Trey Mays, his wide receiver who was just flagged for a 15 yard penalty on that kickoff. Yeah, it was a little ticky tack. He got blocked out of bounds, was a little frustrated. Was given a little business by one of the Boise players and got up and you know the saying goes the refs always see the second punch. Doug Martin still your tailback stretch it up top stop 
And then he starts, looking like he was dropped for a loss. Instead, he'll gain about a half yard, if that. Nate Holloway, the defensive tackle on the stop. Well, when Boise had the ball last time, Kellen Moore did a good job of being able to distribute the football. The lefty putting the ball right where it needs to be. We talked about his location and also decision-making ability. But I'm telling you what, James, they're not making it easy for him. This UNLV Rebel defense flying around to the football. That time, Nate Carter coming up with a tackle out in the flat. The Rebels are flying to the football and gang tackling, which is critical to success. Here's another third down for the Broncos. There's the senior Las Vegas linebacker, Nate Carter, and quick to the line. More on the Broncos. Two of three on third down. Man coverage down low. Moore looks that way. Great job defensively. Sidney Hodge, the sophomore. Outstanding job right in the hip pocket of the intended receiver and comes across with that front arm to bat it away. And so another big stand for UNLV and they dodged that bullet that could have been a huge momentum killer. There's no question and this team is feeling confident on both sides of the ball. Sidney Hodge is a very consistent and durable player. They trust him a lot to be able to play man coverage because of his aggressiveness and sureness about himself. As we all know, Chris Peterson, Boise State Broncos, not afraid to get tricky on special teams. Elkin goes up for the high snap and puts up a high punt. Johnson calls for the fair catch and lets it go over his head. Will take a Bronco roll. So again, the sophomore and his Rebel offense will start with their backs to the goal line. There's another sophomore defensive back getting in on the action. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sam Boyd Stadium here in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. And I'm James Bates. I've got Aaron Taylor, Brooke Collins, and the whole CBS Sports Network crew. Capping off our triple header here on a great college football Saturday. The number five team in the nation tied at seven with UNLV. To the ground. How about this freshman, Deonze Bradford, who scored just his second career touchdown last time UNLV had the ball. I mean, he brings the wood when, when he's at the end of a run, making the defenders pay. No, and he's a young guy, freshman, six foot 10, 210 pounds out of Serrano High School in Phelan, California. Sometimes when guys are young, they don't know what they're supposed to do and not supposed to do. They just know that they've got the fifth best team in the country here on homecoming, and they want to show up and play. And right now, it's been UNLV setting the tone and not backing down and being able to establish the run game. He got five yards there, runs into the back of his offensive lineman, but still pushes forward. Tommy Smith, the linebacker, on the tackle, but it will be close to another first down, just about a yard shot. Well, I got to tell you, Tim Cornette, sitting watching this game, may be a little nervous, because I really like what I'm seeing about Deontay Bradford. You look at what Boise State First quarter points, the last five games, they have not allowed anybody to score. Tonight, coming into this game, they had outscored their opponents 64 to nothing. And early on, UNLV's been able to find Pater. They're clicking. I'm sorry, they did give them the first down yardage. So fresh set of downs. And Herring to throw home. Very, very dangerous throw. Michael Johnson does come up with the catch, but George Iloka was lurking and almost picked it off. Eight yards on the pickup. You gotta be careful if you're a young freshman trying to thread that ball in. We've talked about Kellen Moore's ability to be able to thread the needle, but that was a pretty good job that time by Caleb Herring. Just out of the reach of George Iloka, who's in great coverage right there. That's a pretty big time throw and a nice arm thrown from that far half. First time tonight to see the fullback, former linebacker William Vea. And a play action pass. Good job by Bradford with the blitz pickup, and here goes the sophomore. First down and a little more. Out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Evo McKinde, one of two new faces there to start at corner for Boise State here tonight. Caleb Herring making very good decisions tonight. 
You go back to that last drive, putting the ball on his receivers, and when it wasn't there, making a good decision, tucking and making plays with his legs to be able to keep drives alive. Then it was the legs of Deontay Bradford, absolutely manhandling, being physical to a Boise State defense that's one of the best I've seen this year in college football. Fake to Johnson in the handoff to Bradford. Bradford will get two yards there behind the left side of that offensive line. The left side is all freshmen. It's the right side where you get, it gets a little interesting, Aaron. Yusef Rogers, the starting right tackle, weighs 245 pounds. This is FBS football. And Doug Zisman is just a whole lot of heart. He's one of those guys that when you have to get weighed in before the game, he's sticking five and 10 pound dumbbells in his shorts to try and keep weight on. He struggled to keep weight on but he's doing a mighty fine job tonight, that whole unit. So back to the ground, and Bradford, same result there as he runs right into Tyrone Crawford, a one-yard pickup, and the senior from Ontario drops him. Tyrone Crawford, Michael Atkinson, who we've seen in on a few tackles tonight for Boise State, were teammates back in Windsor, Ontario, right across the river from Detroit. Tyrone Crawford's a great player with long arms. NFL scouts like his motor. That time he crashed in and sealed and came down the line of scrimmage. UNLV likes to run a lot of power in full play, so that defensive end has to crash down and take away that because he's unblocked. And flags before they can get that play off. Ball star. Number 77 offense. Yeah, Five just when we were talking up our Still man Yusef Rogers, the 240-pound right tackle for Bobby Howe. Let's see if we can see it. Well, that was the other side. Brent Boyko, another Canadian. He was a quarterback in high school last year, 6'7", 300 pounds. <laughs> Made his first start in college football against <laughs> Wisconsin. That plans to be in the next Jesse Palmer, Canadian quarterback. <laughs> so now a third and 11. Dumps it out to Johnson. Michael Johnson, little stutter step, but uh -uh, not falling for it is George I. Loco. Good job in the open field by the senior. Well, at the beginning of the show, when we were going through the lineups, I told you to keep your eye on number eight, George I. Loco. He's a very good open field tackler. He fills the alley very well on runs. He did have a missed tackle a little bit when Deontay Bradford scored, but he did a tremendous job closing that time. And good pickup by Bradford. A little pressure late from McClellan coming off that backside and getting into the legs of Caleb Herring. Got to keep the quarterback clean. It was Potter back there. Potter a great returner. And he won't get a chance at it either as this one goes off the side of the foot of Lansford. His previous punt put the Bronco offense at the 50 to start and they took advantage and scored. And our Conoco Mountain West Athletes of the Week right here in Vegas. James Dunlap, the Juco transfer, a career day against Colorado State. And Deontay Purvis, 98-yard kick return for a touchdown. His second career kickoff return for a touchdown and the second longest here at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Yeah, Dunlap had a tremendous game last week, James. And remember when we were talking to the coaches yesterday, he said he's not necessarily a verbal leader of the defense, but he definitely leads by example with the way he hustles and flies to the football every practice, every game. Just a 25-yard punt ball on the ground. Moore falls on it. And immediately falling on top of him, John Lotu Lele. And that will do it for one quarter. The number five team in the nation, the Boise State Broncos and the hometown UNLV Rebels tied at seven. You're watching Prime Time Football presented by Discover Card exclusively on CBS Sports Network. It's the second year on the sidelines for a head coach here at UNLV, Bobby Houck, after an outstanding seven-year run as the head man of the Grizz at Montana, the winningest coach in Big Sky Conference history. And coming off of a win over Colorado State and his counterpart across the way, one of the best in the business, Chris Peterson. 
Brings his Broncos in at 7-0, but a little bit of a slow start for his gunslinger Moore. That one was on the money from the lefty. A good defensive play there, Tim Hassan, to break it up. Great job by him going and anticipating that throw and trying to throw his guy open. But the story of this game so far is this defense is playing very stout, not creating any room on the ground for the runners to run. Doug Martin's been held in check, and they've been very aggressive in that defensive back end, James. Chris Peterson has his Broncos to a 7-0 start for the third straight year. But he's also watching them start very slowly. Not a great first quarter. Low snap, and Moore gets it. He's almost dropped for just the fourth time. This year, he goes down. Kellen Moore, second in the nation when it comes to fewest sacks. He's dropped by Alex Klorman. That was one of the things that this UNLV defense, it's just a, sub, a simple TE stunt from inside, and then John Lotulele gets there first and flushes Kellen Moore, <coughs> excuse me, outside the pocket. And then Corman, Corman comes over and finishes the play, and that's that hustle that I'm talking about this UNLV defense is playing with tonight. And I got to tell you, James, Boise is flat. The third punt tonight for Elkin, and this went off the side of the foot of Elkin. So it will be great field position to start for UNLV as they'll have a shot of taking the lead. Well, we've got a Heisman hopeful here tonight. Here's our Heisman watch presented by Nissan. It was a slow start for Andrew Luck and the Cardinal in Corvallis on the road, but they got things in gear and beat Oregon State earlier today. <laughs> of course, one heck of a defensive matchup, not much offense for Trent Richardson and the Crimson Tide. The Honey Badger kind of likes that. He just takes it, A.T. He takes whatever he wants. And right now, looks like LSU's taking it to Alabama. It's tied up in a very defensive ball game, but pretty much what we expected. And of course, the guys back in New York will discuss not only the Heisman race, but a great day of college football at halftime. Full quarter to be played, though. Herring, plenty of time, and the pressure finally comes. Tyrone Crawford, as everybody down the field was covered. Great job by Crawford there, refusing to stay blocked. That was 100% a coverage sack. Good job by that offensive line. But the back end of Boise State did a tremendous job. They ran three verticals that time. Everybody was covered. Caleb Herring had nowhere to be able to throw the football. He's got to be able to check the ball down and right there pull it and get upfield and take five or six yards. You cannot take a sack putting yourself in such a disadvantageous position on second down. The Canadian says no way, eh? Five yards the wrong way for Herring. So a second down and 15 now. Blitz was coming. But again, another flag before this one. It is snapped Tempo. late. Offense, five yard penalty, second down. Okay, this is two back to back missed assignments and mental errors by Caleb Herring can't afford to do that you've got the momentum going you've got the number five team in the country on their heels your offensive line's feeling good but now you're moving backward and it plays to the strength of Boise State who when they know it's a pass they're going to be able to come they have to stay in the rush lanes if UNLV is smart they'll try and run a draw right here and draw these guys up field but this is not what you want to do start marching backwards Bradford stays in to block though here's the tight end and it's Vidal, Anthony Vidal's first snag tonight. Goes for eight yards, gets back up near that original line of scrimmage. Yeah, James, it's not uncommon for a young quarterback to be able to make those throws. Keep an eye on him. He's the number two receiver in there, number 88. Good job just doing a simple out route, trying to get upfield and get some yardage. But it brings up a third and 12. This is a situation where Boise State can be aggressive, pin their ears back, and come after you. Caleb Herring has to make good decisions on this down. Four wides, Broncos show the blitz. Here they come. And there's a pickup on third down of five yards. Philip Payne on the reception. And the punt unit is out there to meet with their head coach slash special teams coordinator, Bobby Howe. And see James right there, they were within five yards of the first down. If they hadn't got that delay a game penalty, moving them five yards back, that would have been a first down. Well, and 
Obviously, if you've got a fake punt, they're in your back pocket. An outstanding opportunity. Nothing to lose. And Lansford, punt is blocked. He's rock. And it was Byron Howe. The linebacker comes through, scot free, drills the punter and the ball at the same time. Just opening up the floodgates, and that's absolutely what you didn't want. Yeah, a five yard penalty hurts, but you talk about a momentum killer. How about the big 240 pounder? Keep your eye on number 88, Anthony Vidal, the tight end, Byron Hout. This comes right by the center, but Mike Lawson, number six there, has to be able to get him. Nobody accounted for Byron Hout. You see Bobby Hout there, not very happy with his tight end. But to me, James, it looked like it was number six, Mike Lawson, the safety former quarterback that could have got a shot on Hout. Play action pass, Moore looks to go up top. And there's the timing route that you know so well if you watch a lot of Boise State ball hooking up with little brother Kirby for the first time tonight. A 12 yard pickup. Well, we talked about the location and Kellen Moore doing a thing of beauty. That ball was absolutely on the money there. And that may have been, that block punt may have been what this Boise State team who came out kind of lethargic, maybe a little groggy after having so much time off to be able to get them back in this ball game to take control. Seventh block kick of the season for Boise State. Their fourth block punt. Here they'll try a little end around and stretched and dropped is Mitch Burrows. A good job defensively by James Dunlap and company. That was James Dunlap doing a great job of setting that edge, James. Boise State likes to be able to attack the edges and be able to run those outside running plays. To be able to stop that, you've got to be able to get penetration and get upfield to number 90. Dunlap that time the co-defensive player of the week did a great job of setting the edge forcing it back and allowing the pursuit to make the tackle here's Doug Martin and Doug Martin has had a rough night tonight Dunlap back to back drops and back to back outstanding games what a start to this one in the senior Doug Martin very slow to get up. I got to tell you, Doug Martin's one of the better running backs that a lot of people don't talk about in the country when in terms of Heisman or, or outstanding running back performances. But tonight, he's averaged over five yards of carry coming in tonight. But that defensive line up front is taking it to Boise State. That's not Doug Martin's fault. He just doesn't have anywhere to run. DJ Harper, good to see him back and healthy after battling separate knee injuries. They swing it the other way. Uh -oh. oh, wow! Uh -oh. He's got a blocker, but he doesn't need it. The freshman, Matt Miller, one of the best athletes ever to come out of the state of Montana. Untouched, 30 yards. Heck of a ball play there, A.T. Everybody on defense thought they were going the way of D.J. Harper on the screen. That's the old middle bubble screen there. That time, defensive coordinator Craig Paulson dialed up some pressure. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. And that time, UNLV's defense fell on a great play call into the perfect defense. We've had a fun game here so far in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Presented to you tonight by Discover Car, the freshman getting in on the action. Kellen Moore, his second touchdown pass of the night. Well, that time UNLV on that last touchdown wanted to be able to bring some pressure. They come off the slot, they bring Matt to Olotulele up, and they bail the middle linebacker to be able to cover. And down at the bottom of your screen, number two, Matt Miller, everybody takes themselves out of the play for UNLV's defense. That's the absolute perfect offensive call for that type of blitz. And undoubtedly, offensive coordinator Brent Pease had scouted that out, knew what their tendencies were, or just got extremely, extremely lucky. <laughs> well, you get lucky a lot when you've got a senior like Kellen Moore slinging the ball around. A high kick from Harmon. And this is Bradley Randall again as they kick away from Deontay Purvis. And I would too. Up across the 25, the stop by Dextrell Simmons. Caleb Herring in the Rebels when we return. 
Back here at Sam Boyd Stadium in Vegas in 94, in the middle of your screen, Byron Hout turned the tide, it seems right now anyway, after a sluggish start for the number five team in the nation, a big block punt turned the tables momentum-wise. Can Caleb Herring, the sophomore, and these Rebels answer one more time, the completion to Philip Payne for four yards. Bradley Randall, the new running back in there. And UNLV going like a little bit of hurry up. A little up tempo matching Kellen Moore and the Broncos at their game. Good penetration, but a good job by Randall. Randall powering forward for a first down. JC Percy on the stop, but the chains will move. And the offensive line. Three freshmen starting up there. Doing a great job, just pulling big bodies. They like to get big bodies in space. That time, number 40, Tyrone Crawford, came upfield a little too far and created that scene. And I gotta tell you, this young offensive line is taking control up front, James. And that is not the Crawford that we've seen throughout the year. He's not a reacher. He is a hustler and a player that usually brings his feet, but didn't right there, and Randall right, ran right through the arm tap. Back to the ground again, slicing, dicing, but only a couple this time. Brooke Collins. Well, for more on that very young offensive line, by the way, Coach Houck said they're doing great, always improving on their run game, and he says next year they will be a force. Now get this, guys. UNLV is one of only four schools that do not play a senior on their offensive line. The other three, Tennessee, Arizona, and Georgia Tech. Absolutely, he's fired up about the future. Coach Bobby Houck in his second year and, and talked about the young ones and, and the older ones as well. There's there's that 245 pounder, Paul Pucciarelli, longtime equipment manager here, told me yesterday, yeah, we got a right tackle that thinks he's an underwear model. Skinny offensive line. <laughs> We're all skinny, baby, at least in our minds. Can the skinny guys power forward for three much needed yards here? Play action pass in time for Herring. Yes, first down to Michael Johnson. I'm sorry, check that, Philip Payne. And Payne, who had two touchdown catches in that Colorado State win, became the all time UNLV touchdown receptions leader with 25. And that's the 10th first down of the night. And Caleb Herring looking. A lot like the quarterback that went 28 no his last that two years. That play in high last week against Colorado State gave this young man confidence, and there's a carryover tonight. Got to keep it going, though, against this big Boise State defense. Back to the air. This time the tight end, Anthony Vidal. Been a very good night for Caleb Herring tonight, James. Making plays all over the place, doing a good job of locating the ball, throwing very high percentage passes underneath, not making him make a lot of reads. If something's not there, he's using his legs, almost 40 rushing yards tonight when he pulls the ball down and break, but having some success on first down. This pistol offense is hard when it's firing, and tonight it is. Well, the hammer in this pistol look, if you will, is the sophomore Randall one more time. The running back will take the ball. Full head of steam and will be up close to that first down stick. Third down and very short now after the four yard gain. Jarrell Root on the stop. Well, we talked about Byron Hout and how that could have possibly been a momentum shifter, but this offensive line has taken over. This is just straight zone blocking. Picking people up and just mashing people, getting the hat on a hat. A lot of times offensive line play isn't pretty, and right now it's effective and they're getting it done up front. And this was a drive that UNLV had to answer, and this is a huge third down that that young offensive line is going to have to step up once again. It's a young fullback in, too, the former linebacker, Vea. And they go the other way, and he's turned backwards. Wow, what a stop. Coming through Tevis. Behind Jarrell Root. Root got there first with great penetration to turn it back. Jarrell Root is the heart and soul of this defense. This time they go to the well one too many times. Great job just scraping down the line of scrimmage. Creating nowhere for him to run. A huge fourth down decision. I like this call by Bobby Howe. 
you're in a ball game. You got the number five team in the country at home. You've had a good job with your offensive line. Call one of your base runs. Take control of the line of scrimmage and get it done up front. But first, he wants to talk things over. A great big call to so a timeout needed. 525 left in the first half. The strip in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, and just over 10 miles away, we've got a heck of a ball game. Bobby Houck with a big decision to go for it here. On fourth down against the number five Boise State Broncos and powering behind a young, inexperienced, scrappy offensive line. The chains will move. Michael Atkinson there in the middle, unable to stop the surge of guys like Brett Boyko. That's Canadian on Canadian, eh? Brett Boyko is Canadian for I'm a man, boy. <laughs> oh, take off you hoser, he says. The 300-pound redshirt freshman who was on his way to Eastern Washington before these old Montana coaches swooped in and got him. So a fresh set of downs now for Caleb Heron. That's Johnson in motion. And the play pass, he looks that way. Another dangerous throw, and it's all the money. Did he step out? No. It looked to me, James, like he might have stepped out. Bringing pressure that time, Boise State. Caleb Herring puts the money, the ball right on the money. Oh, he's tiptoeing. It looks pretty good. It looked like he might have stepped out. Waylon Ewing Burton right there on the coverage made a play for the ball didn't get it gave up the touchdown just a tremendous individual effort by Michael Johnson after the great throw by the young sophomore Caleb Herring how about that shot the concentration in the seniors eyes oh this one is close if he is out of bounds it's just by a hair or shall we say a dreadlock in Johnson's case let's take another look at it. Gosh, I tell you what, with the naked eye, it looked like he stepped out when it was in real time. Can't tell. He's not that. with his right foot. It doesn't look like he's out. Doesn't look like his left foot is out to me either. The lines judge is right there. He's looking right down the line. He's got a perfect view of that and did not blow his whistle and wave him out of bounds. So unless there's conclusive evidence, James, to overturn this, the call on the field is a touchdown. And I haven't seen anything so far in the replay that would say otherwise. And from the roar of the crowd, I think they think the officials got it right. If this stands, which it certainly looks like it will, 176 yards of total offense for the Rebels to 96 of Boise State. Here we go. After further review, the ruling on the field stands its call. Touchdown. <laughs> wow. Our head referee tonight, Mr. July, telling Rebel fans what they want to hear. Here's Cohorst, the sophomore from Henderson, just up the road to tie it up. Former quarterback on the hold, Mike Clausen and Bobby Houck's Rebels have answered once again, tying up Boise State at 15. Watch the touch and then the dive. What a great job by the senior. Give yourself a hand, Michael Johnson. Adam Zucker with you from New York. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report, the game of the century was a game of defense and special teams. The full story from overtime, LSU and Alabama. Oklahoma State in a back-and-forth battle with Kansas State. As they try to remain undefeated, it's down to the wire. And the two highest-ranked teams in the Big Ten go down. Just another crazy day as we send it back to Vegas. James Bates and Aaron Taylor. Well, thank you, Adam. The craziness continues. Here in Vegas, I've got my man Aaron Taylor, Brooke Collins down on the sidelines, the number five team in the nation here in town, taking on UNLV, who snapped a three-game losing streak with a come-from-behind win last time out against Colorado State. 
And a hungry bunch of Rebels given the Broncos fits this ball out the back of the end zone. Dallas Burroughs was there, but Lansford's kick will force Kellen Moore and Boise State to start at the 20. Here's your Mountain West standings brought to you by Conoco. TCU surviving a little bit of a scare, trailing in the second half on the high plains of Laramie, Wyoming earlier today. They stay undefeated, setting up a big matchup atop the Mountain West in Boise next weekend. Yeah, well, Boise's got bigger problems and bigger fish to fry tonight. They've got to get by UNLV, who's making the statement, let them know that they came to play tonight. DJ Harper remains in. Doug Martin took a big hit earlier. And these Rebels are feeling it right now, swarming the football. Pass is complete to Chris Potter for three yards. You're absolutely right when you say that the defense is swarming, James. You're absolutely right. They're running to the football, and that's what you have to do against this offense. We've talked all night long about the youth of this young football team, the, the young coach. And, and you look up and down those standings in the Mountain West, the future indeed bright for this team right here in Vegas. To the ground, DJ Martin. And the pads popping hard, James Dunlap has been very active here tonight. A gain of four, and that will bring up another third down. This is, a, this is a team that's great on third down. Kellen Moore, so knowledgeable of what the defense is trying to do to them, but they also don't get in a lot of third down situations because they move the ball so well. But when you do, third and three is exactly where it is you want to be. That last time, that Boise State offensive line got a lot of movement and created some room for DJ Harper. What a big stop it would be for this Rebel D. They rush four. Ball thrown behind Matt Miller, and the freshman goes back to get it as he takes a lick. What a big old catch for Miller, who just scored a touchdown. So many times, Kellen Moore throws his receivers open and does them favors. This time, Matt Miller does him a favor. Good tight coverage, great job and concentration and showing some ball skills to turn around. Ball a little bit behind him, very tight coverage. Lochi Lele right there. Play action pass for Moore. And the lefty throws it all the way across the field, but Shoemaker unable to hold on to it as he goes down to the turf. UNLV playing very aggressive with their corners tonight. When we talked to defensive coordinator Craig Paulson, he said he had a lot of confidence in those guys. He was going to mix it up and run some two shell two high safeties but also have to run some man coverage he said against Boise State you can't be predictable we got to be able to get some pressure some mix and match our coverages but play aggressive Burroughs in motion and here's the screen it scored earlier and this time it's complete to Boldovan ball on the ground Shoemaker holding on to the defender Trying to get to the ball, bouncing around. That is perfectly legal. Could he get it? It was Kloss in the former quarterback that knocked the ball loose. And the Broncos come up with the football. Look at the body language right now of Boise State compared to UNLV. UNLV is feeling this ball game. This is the same play that they had scored on earlier number six Mike Lawson right there doing a great job of just delivering a physical blow Boldevine didn't see him coming great job and effort by the hustle by Shoemaker to come over but that is the tenacity that this rebel defense is playing tonight look at all the red hats going after that football that's why UNLV's in this ball game also tenacity by Shoemaker at the end of that play to keep it in the hands of the guys in the white jerseys. Flag down. There's DJ Harper, the senior from Cypress, Texas, running the ball, but this one may come back the other way. Offside, number 47 defense. Penalty will be declined. Second down. Beg your pardon on UNLV, so Chris Peterson choosing to decline. Chris Peterson brings his team in with a 7-0 record, 2-0 in conference play, and Bobby Howe 
In that game last week, Colorado State was able to get some procedure penalties using hard counts, and Kellen Moore is doing the same tonight. Chance to go up top. Second and very short. Slings it out to Shoemaker. The senior Shoemaker from Meridian, Idaho, right there in the Boise area on the reception. Nine touchdown catches leading this team on the season for Big Shoe. Tonight's primetime football game presented to you by Discover Car, along with Aaron Taylor and Brooke Collins. I'm James Bates. So glad to have you with us as we cap off a triple header on CBS Sports Network on one outstanding college football day. You just saw LSU defeat Alabama in a game for the ages, and Kellen Moore tonight trying to become the winningest quarterback in college football history. Again, a screen pass. This time it's to the speedster Burroughs. Burroughs is free, and the ball came out again, but it goes out of bounds. Two fumbles on this drive, and Boise State still able to hang on to it. Nate Carter coming over, and the former quarterback, Clawson, as well. Great job out on the edge by Chris Potter getting a block right there. Getting up back up field turning on Quentin Porter gets him down on the ground. But we talked about that hustle and pursuit to the football. I'm telling you what UNLV is bringing the wood in Boise State which has done a tremendous job of protecting the football this year has put it on the ground way too many times tonight. Mike Clawson has caused two fumbles on this drive. He's a former quarterback. He said coach I just want to be on the field and when you hit like that. You see why now, but it is a first down for Moore. Trickery, fake reverse, and there's the touch pass. A great job to recover, and maybe not. Too early, low to Lele, who gets his first start here tonight. Draws the flag. It came out late, and the junior from Hawaii looked like he recovered just in time to bat it away. Yeah, that's unfortunate for UNLV. They had the matchup that they wanted. That was a pretty good job by Lotu Lele in coverage. The officials think he was there a little early. It look, actually looked pretty good to me. Pass interference. Defense. Literally be 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. UNLV's playing so aggressive tonight, and they're having some success doing so, but you can't play too aggressive. They jumped off sides earlier in this play. Man, that is close. He doesn't turn around to make any play on the ball, but it looks like he makes contact right as the ball shows up. That's a call that could have went either way, and this time it went for Boise. He's on the road thinking they were going to get the easy win. UNLV, the second charge start mile. There's another timeout seconds. for UNLV. And remember, Aaron, Tawny Maka, who leads this team in interceptions, a linebacker, very good against the pass. That's his spot. Lotu Lele has had a great game so far, just a tad early there. But it's Maka and four others. Another starter, the tailback Cornette, suspended for this game after <laughs> celebrating a little bit too much after the Colorado State win. It was Bobby Houck who in our meetings with him yesterday said I didn't want to talk about Boise State. I knew they were on the horizon but we haven't won a lot so far in my two years here. We were going to celebrate that one and they certainly did and they're celebrating right now having a good time and putting on quite a show against number five in Sam Boyd Stadium. There's no question that they have but a couple of costly penalties certainly helped out Boise's offense. We talked about how proficient they are. When they get down here in the red zone, you don't want to give them any additional help. They need to be able to come up with a big play. They've been able to put the ball on the ground and force two fumbles from Boise tonight. They need to get something else going. These are the plays you need to make down here low. There's DJ Harper. He dances behind that two tight end formation. And he will get down to the five yard line as Boise State Trying to knock it in with under 50 seconds here to go in this first half. Number five tied up with UNLV at 14. Boise will attack the edges. Play pass. Oh, and a good job defensively again. This time it's Quinton Pointer, the senior from down in southwest Florida, Fort Myers. 
Just like prime time, huh? <laughs> Not with a knee brace, though. Quentin Pointer, ankle injury, ACL injury. A lot of NFL scouts here tonight looking at a lot of different players before the injuries. He was somebody that had a bright future in the NFL, but he's certainly playing like he's not hurt tonight. They've moved this young man to safety, and he hasn't skipped a beat. Very tight coverage, but a huge play here on third and goal. <laughs> Looks the way of a fade route and just fires it in there to Matt Miller. And the freshman from Helena, Montana, has his second touchdown reception of the night. Again, they pick on the backup linebacker, Lotu Lele. Well, we talked about Kellen Moore and his ability to be able to throw the football. It was just a fade stop, perfect back shoulder throw, timed perfectly. Miller turns around, the ball hits him in the chest on the money, extremely hard to defend. Extra point is good by Goodale. And Goodale, the redshirt freshman, has really come on here as of late. 21 points for the Boise State Broncos, all three touchdown passes by Moore. Yeah, that's Matt Miller with Will Chandler right there in tight coverage. Just a little bit too far off. You got to be aggressive down there on the goal line, down deep in the red zone. And that's tough to defend. When you're out there on an island one on one, you don't want to let a guy get inside of you. But you also can't play too soft and let him be able to turn around and hit the stop on you. Down on in that Verizon red zone, we threw up the graphic for you earlier, and things got so hectic with Bobby Houck's defense trying to make a big stop here against number five. And now the special teams coordinator signals to his defensive or his kick return unit rather as Trevor Harmon tees it up to boot it away. There he is, 98-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Last time out against the Colorado State Rams to answer. Can he do it here? A short sky kick that will bounce out of bounds, and that's very dangerous had it taken a different angle. A flag thrown as the ball does go out of bounds. No time. Kick out of bounds. Kick it team. The ball will be spotted. 30, 30 yards of bounds of the free kick. First down. Ran off the clock with it going out of bounds. Nobody touching it. One timeout remaining for UNLV. Let's take a quick look at the icy hot quarterback hot zone. And Kellen Moore, we talked about his ball location. Doing a great job of distributing the football and giving his receivers a chance to be able to run after the catch. Talked about his ball location and delivery. It's been pretty good thus far early in this ball game, and UNLV electing to be able to run the football, therefore running out the clock and going down with the number five team in the country, down by seven points. They go for it on fourth down. What, what do you think of that? You, you've got Philip Payne, one of the best receivers around, and you get five yards on the first one, and you take a timeout into the locker room. It was UNLV who won the coin toss, deferred, and will receive the opening kick of the second half. Kellen Moore one half away if his Broncos can hold on from becoming the winningest quarterback in the history of college football. He comes into tonight tied with Colt McCoy at 45. Let's get it down to Brooke. Coach, just a seven-point lead. What changes have to be made at halftime for you to pull away in the second half? Well, I think we got to play better in the lines, offensively and defensively. I think UNLV is doing a good job of controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides. We haven't seen Doug Martin a ton. Is he okay? We think he's fine. Good to know. Thanks, Coach. All right. Coach Chris Peterson has his team at 7-0, but a little bit of trouble here on the road in Vegas in a Mountain West Conference matchup. 21 to 14, number five on top, two touchdowns for the freshman. We're gonna send it to the Verizon Halftime Report right after this. Sam Boyd Stadium here in Las Vegas, where our prime time game between fifth-ranked Boise State and UNLV is presented to you by Discover Card. Boise State fans selling out, buying the whole allotment 
of tickets coming to town. Hey, a lot of people come to Las Vegas with high hopes, but those dreams get dashed from time to time. Still with a seven-point lead as we welcome you back here at halftime, Aaron Taylor, James Bates. But without a doubt, Kellen Moore throws three touchdown passes. Still as a whole, this unit coming off the bye week a little bit lethargic in the first half. There was no question. It seemed like that they didn't have the sense of urgency about them. We historically have seen with Chris Peterson's teams. You have to wonder whether or not they were looking forward to next week's game against TCU. Early on, UNLV was setting the tone, getting after it on the defensive side of the ball, sacking Kellen Moore, and then the offensive line with those three freshmen we talked about at the top of the show that controlled the line of scrimmage. Then Caleb Herring putting the ball on the money and coming up and making plays, but Boise State being the true good team that they are found a way to get themselves back in the game Byron Howe with the puck block creating a turnover on downs and Matt Miller doing a great job on the bubble screen scoring two touchdowns tonight has showed up huge at the wideout position for Boise State. UNLV winning the opening coin toss here tonight deferring to the second half so they will get first try at it to tie things up and a Bright spot of Bobby Houck's team, his return unit. Trevor Harmon will kick it away. And he's got two guys that can go. Deontay Purvis ran one back for 98 yards and a touchdown in the come from behind win over Colorado State. Next to him, Bradley Randall, who has done a good job. The sophomore running back on offense. And the second half underway. A nice boot by Harmon. Un Returnable. Bobby Houck stopped by to talk to Brooke Collins on his way out of the locker room. He sure did, James, and he told me he is actually very pleased with his defense. He says they're tackling extremely well. He was very frustrated about that block putt, and I asked him about his quarterback. I said, is this one of those hot streaks you were talking about? And he said he looked very confident in the first half. He hopes he does the same in the second. All right, thank you, Brooke. And those hot streaks that Bobby Houck and, and Brooke talk about, we're tied in with basketball. Go figure. Here in a town where basketball is so big, the running Rebel basketball team and their new head coach, and it has been a quarterback that has been hot and cold. They compared him to a streaky shooter in hoops. Let's check out our first half stats. Reeled in by Bass Pro Shops, Aaron. Well, the rushing yards is what really surprised me. UNLV was able to have a lot of success, but it was more the way that Boise State was held in check that was impressive to me from UNLV. Third downs, though, this UNLV defense has to be able to find them ways to get themselves on the field, and they need a little bit better job on first and second down offensively to be able to create some more room and higher percentage chances for them to convert their own third downs offensively. Two tights in the game, Vidal and Harrington running that way is the freshman Bradford and the hard charging freshman who scored his second career touchdown earlier tonight pushes forward to a third down coming up Michael Atkinson a junior on the tackle this drive is very important for UNLV this will allow this team to kind of set the tone and grow up a little bit they took a step forward in the first half. For them to take another step forward, they've got to come out fast in the second half, so this is a critical third down. There's a sophomore from the pistol formation and a flag before they can get the play underway. False start. Number 77 to offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. And that's our man, the right tackle, Yusef Rogers. That's not quite the fast start that I was talking about. Third and ten is a whole different ball game than third and five. But when you're a young offensive line and you've got defensive ends as good as you see Boise there going to the double legal bare defense look where the center and two guards are covered, sometimes you got to be able to sit in there and hold your water and not get a little nervous and jump off sides. Corners were pressing, now they bail. Pressure is on, and getting to him is Chase Baker. Coming off a calf injury, was able to knock the right arm of the sophomore quarterback and squash any hopes of a first down pickup on third and ten. So a three and out for the Boise State Bronco D. And that was Chase Baker coming off that outside edge, unblocked. It was turned back protection. That left Deontay Bradford one-on-one, -on -one, and that was just a poor effort by the running back. He's got to be able to stay up and slow him down a little bit more. Not affect the quarterback that way. Lansford 
scrambles in a better looking punt end over end though when it hops over Potter's head. They need it. That hop to buy a little bit better field position. It's been a rough night so far for the punter here at UNLV. 49. This one goes. Here's our Discover Card quarterback pass chart for senior quarterback Kellen Moore. Well, Kellen Moore has completed 69% of the throws. He throws almost 7 out of 10. And you see tonight he's been very effective underneath. The three touchdowns were all yards after the catch. Matt Miller doing a good job of catching the football and then running with it after he catches it. And that's something that UNLV is going to have to be able to address. They played aggressive. They can't play too aggressive and get beat on some double moves. YRT is his center. Again, he did not start the game. DJ Harper gets going north and south. This is a nice pickup. What we expected to see a good deal of from Harper and Martin. Martin left the game, banged up a little bit. We have not seen him for a while. And DJ Harper, nine yard pickup. Coaches have the same amount of confidence, whether it's Harper or Martin in there. They're interchangeable, but Harper runs hard. He's also got a lot of speed. I wouldn't be surprised to be able to see him get to the outside edge, but establishing the run is something that's imperative for this Bronco offense. Chance for this offense to try to go up top. They'll go to the ground, pick up the first down, is bending it back. Is DJ Harper, who just moved into the top 10 at Boise State all time with 20 rushing touchdowns. So you've got two senior running backs both in that top 10. Of course, Doug Martin and his 36 career rushing touchdowns. Hope he's okay as he's taken some shots from a hard hitting UNLV defense here. Aaron. Yeah, there's no question. They've been flying around, but these first two plays that Boise State offensive line is coming out and setting the tempo. Nate Potter had a great block on that last one. Play action pass and rolling the lefty. Oh, that's two drops tonight. Tyler Shoemaker, the senior, usually hauling those in and going. He has more touchdowns than anybody on this team. Yeah, if there was a weakness to Kellen Moore's game, it was about him being able to throw the football on the move. He did a great job that time putting the ball right on Shoemaker. Hits him right in the hands. It's just a focus problem. Well, and... Kellen over to the sidelines. It's Grant Hedrick, the red shirt freshman, the running package. We did expect a little bit of this as he is a runner and will read right here. Has a lead blocker, a nice looking play, and showing you he can scoop the freshman from Independence, Oregon. And how about how about Hedrick? He got his first career pass completion against Colorado State AT. It was called a lateral during the game. Three days later, they checked the tape and they called Colorado State who awarded him with one complete pass in his career and back over to the sidelines. Better late than never for the run first quarterback. And what that does is it gives something to UNLV's defense to be able to think about it effectively becomes a wildcat, but they can throw out of that as well. Here's a third and short for Moore. And it's batted away. Big play by the UNLV defense. Alex Clorman, the sophomore, there inside. That's exactly what it is you wanted to do. We talked about UNLV on third down, having to find a way to be able to get themselves off the field. If you can't get any pass rush, you can't get any penetration, get your hands up. Great job that time by Clorman to be able to get his hands up and force the punt. That's a great job by UNLV coming out and picking up in the second half right where they left off in the first. Elkin, one of the best in the country when it comes to pinning opponents inside the 20. Doesn't get a lot of practice out of it. Nice high punt. Hodge is the returner. And he does a good job putting those heels at the 10-yard line and calling for the fair catch. So not much there for the offense in the second half, but another big stand for the kids from Vegas. College football on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Conoco, who reminds you to always use Conoco gasoline because your car knows. By Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And by Icy Hot, America's number one topical pain reliever. 
And welcome back. Some beautiful photos from the 2010 Fiesta Bowl, where number six Boise State took on number four TCU. The Broncos defeated the Frogs 17 to 10. As Kellen Moore goes 23 of 39, 211 yards passing, and UNLV and the freshman running back back at it. And notice how there's no touchdown thrown in there. Usually when you read stats for Kellen Moore, oh, such and such touchdowns, he has never in two games thrown a touchdown pass against the TCU Horn Frogs, who, by the way, go back to Cowtown after the win in Laramie, Wyoming today to get ready for a big matchup next week. And the only three previous meetings between TCU and Boise State have been in bowl games in the last eight years. First things first, though, Aaron, they've got their hands full here in the Nevada desert. And again, this time it looks like it's the left side of that offensive line as up front they're shifting and confusing the young guy. False start. Number 78, offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. They've had some penalties early in this ball game, but let's show you some blocking that on plays where they did do a great job. Keep your eye right here. Great job by the right tackle, Yusef Rogers and Anthony Vidal, and then some great running there by Bradford to be able to finish. Creating run lanes at the point of attack is something that UNLV did a great job of in the first. Creating those seams is what it is you want to be able to do as they run the Statue of Liberty play or Stonehenge, rather, where the offensive line doesn't move. They're taking a page at old Boise's book. Tulsa runs that, too. How about Tulsa? Last time we saw Tulsa, it was up on the blue turf, taking on Chris Peterson's bunch. And what a tough run to start the season for the Golden Hurricane. They've turned it around. And there's more confusion. Just the, it looked like. But that's a stone chin's play. It's a called play. It's designed to confuse the defense. None of the offensive linemen is supposed to move. Some of them did and some of them didn't. Third and very long. Can they get their first first down of the second half here? Can it pick some work? Ball on the ground. Picked up by a big man, Yusef Rogers. <laughs> and the ball's still squirting around. He goes airborne. Caleb Herring down on the ground. Holding that right hamstring. Mm. Oh, they don't need this. Their sophomore quarterback in pain on his back. It was Byron Hout who had the block punt earlier that caused it. McClellan came off that other side, flushed him out. Hout's there. Tyrone Crawford's there. Michael Atkinson as well as this training staff takes a look at their sophomore quarterback. We'll be back to check on. So moments ago, the sophomore Caleb Herring under his own power, able to get to the sideline, give a few pounds to his buddies. But now forced to punt UNLV. There's a nice punt from Lansford. And here's Burroughs. Mitch Burroughs is dangerous and they bottle him up in a hurry, but it will be good field field position for Kellen Moore and Boise State number five again with the ball here in the second half leading 21 to 14. UNLV still asked to fight here in this prime time game brought to you by Discover Card. UNLV fans having a good time. Oh, honey, I love the Rebels, but I love you more with the crazy hair. Brooke, what's the update on Caleb Herring, the sophomore? Well, James, he, of course, was taken over to the, uh, the sideline. They put him up on the trainer's table. The trainer was working with his left leg. He was stretching it, bending it, pulling it. Then he just hopped off the table and walked over to his teammates. So I, I can't speculate, but he was walking pretty well after he jumped off the table. All right, thank you. Of course, they do have a JUCO transfer, Brooke, and Sean Riley, who has started two games this year. And starting since his red shirt freshman year, Kellen Moore, the quarterback, running the show here for the 7-0, number five team in the nation, trying to make it 46 wins as a starter. Pressure on the left, he steps up, fires. Thrown behind 
his target again in the hands of Shoemaker, but he's unable to pull it in. That one was behind him, though. And the reason it was behind him was because Kellen Moore was moving around the pocket. The pressure that time was able to affect his throw. UNLV is doing a good job of being able to affect the quarterback, and the result was another dropped pass by Shoemaker in this high-powered Boise State offense, which needs another big third down play. UNLV did a good job last time. They need another play here, James. Empty set, low to Lele showing blitz, as is Nate Carter. Kellen wants this ball. He wants it right now. Here is the blitz. He dumps it off. He's got Shoemaker. Nobody's going to get it. Touchdown number 10 here in the senior season. Big Tyler Shoemaker now just four away from a school record, and that is four touchdown passes for the senior Kellen Moore. This one, 49 yards. Well, that time they were naked. Empty set. Tim Hassan, number 43, was locked up on Shoemaker one-on-one, -on -one, and that's a mismatch in the seam. We talked about Boise State wanting to attack the seam. That's exactly what they did on that last play. A couple seniors hooking up that have already graduated. They've got a Masters in scoring points around here. And we're back here at Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. Game three here on CBS Sports Network. A great day of college football. A day that saw one go versus two and one heck of a matchup in Tuscaloosa. LSU, by the way, if you've been sleeping all night long, victorious on the road. Les Miles and that loose bunch of Tigers with the win. Case Keenum on CBS Sports Network. And as Houston Cougars stay undefeated, he breaks a career passing yardage record in the process. So here we go with Bradley Randall as UNLV needs to answer here. Ball on the ground. Or just turn back, rather. And again, it will be tough field position to start for UNLV. This is a situation where a young team has to be able to respond and rebound. UNLV's had the number five team in the country at homecoming at home on the ropes earlier in this ball game. They give up a big play. You can't let one big play end up beating you in this ball game. The offense has done a good job. Boise State has dialed up the pressure in the second half and been able to stop the run a little bit. They've got to be able to get back to their base plays and get some mojo going. Caleb Herring back in the game, which means their offense is wide open. It's good to see our first and 10 line being brought to you tonight by Volkswagen. Loka comes off the edge. He's picked up. And a few there for Bradford as he runs into Tyrone Crawford. Five down defensive linemen there to start this series. And how about the average starting position? Again, UNLV backed up. Boise State has been nice and comfy all night tonight. Yeah, there's no question. That when you're starting at your own 24 compared to the other team's 40 yard line, it means you have to go a lot farther to be able to make some good things happen. Boise adds to that with their big play strike ability. UNLV needs some big plays of their own offensively as they look like they're going to pressure off the top. They do just that. This time on the zone read, it's kept by the quarterback, Herring. But he runs into Shea McClellan. McClellan has been very quiet tonight, the versatile defensive end. Mr. Do It All has been making a lot of plays here in his senior year. Yeah, the coaches called him Clark Kent. He's so kind of hunky dory Monday through Friday, but when Saturday comes, they say he goes into the phone booth and just becomes a different person and being a beast off that outside edge. They call him the Kellen Moore on defense, and, and that's fitting because Kellen Moore looks like the water boy. <laughs> Third down and six now for Herring. And boy, do they ever need a big play. There was a hold on Payne. No flag, but it is a catch and a first down. The chains will move for the Rebels. Ebenezer McKinday 
was all over Payne that time. But great job and concentration. And that's the sort of play you need to be able to make offensively. That you can take a breath and say, okay, guys, let's relax. Now we have to execute. Let's come to the line of scrimmage. Offensive line, I know you're young. I know those guys are good. But let's put this on your shoulders, create some running room, and let's take control of this game again. Payne, one of the many outstanding athletes from here in this Las Vegas area. Play action pass, and a good job there by Iloka as the pass was intended for Michael Johnson. And George Iloka, the senior from Houston, Texas, on the coverage. Tremendous coverage that time in the back end by Boise State's defense. Caleb Herring making the decision to be able to throw the ball only where his receiver can come up or get it or out of bounds. He essentially threw the ball away on that play. They tried to go play action and try and mix it up on first down on that last one. Let's see what they do here, James. Sophomore Kurt Davis in the game. Up top, the wide receiver. Again, the read. And the sophomore keeps it, takes a shot to the shoulder by Aaron Tevis. The linebacker picks up five. So here's a third down coming up with under 620 left to play in the third quarter. That was Lee Hightower. In on that as well. This is a third and manageable down for this team. Again, third downs were something that UNLV struggled with, and this is contributing to the field position scenario in the graphic that we showed you earlier. They need to be able to find a way to get this done as they go three wide to the left. Four man rush that does get pressure late. And down goes the sophomore, Shea McClellan, on the sack. Just when we say he hasn't made much noise tonight, two big plays on this series. We talked about Shea McClellan's ability down here at the bottom of the screen. Just splits the double team, number 88, Anthony Vidal, having trouble helping out that tackle there. That's the second effort to be able to get to the quarterback and force the sack. And credit that back in to Boise's defense. They did a great job of coverage again. Herring had nowhere to throw the ball. Herring and the Rebels now just 3 of 10 on third down. The Georgia Bulldogs know all about that. They were just 2 of 13 to start the year. Tonight's game presented by Discover Car. Ellen Moore from Prosser, Washington. Played for his father at Prosser High School, the Mustangs. We're the state powers there in Washington. New first and ten line for this Kellen Moore led offense brought to you by Volkswagen. And they're trying to get there with the freshman Matt Miller who has speed and has two touchdowns already tonight. And a member of the chain gang taking a lick over there. Quentin Pointer there to force the freshman out of bounds. Well Bobby Houck got fired up when he started talking about Matt Miller yesterday of course. Halka, Montana boy. And Miller from Helena, Montana. Oh, number offense, number three. Ten yards from the spot of foul. Replay first down. Gatorade player of the year there, number two, but the flag on number three, Chris Potter, holding, trying to spring the freshman. So going back the other way now, Chris Peterson's offense. That's a big help for this UNL defense, not only in the field position game, but you can't afford to be able to have plays like that. Daniel Harper is their nickel back for UNLV. Almost had a good play, but missed a tackle. That hole ends up being very beneficial. Linehan in motion, the tight end. And too strong there. The pass was intended for Mitch Burroughs. Rare errant pass for. Kellen Moore on that one again. It's just a timing route. He throws the ball before the receiver even comes out of his break. You talk about whether or not Kellen Moore has what it takes to be able to play on the next level. A lot of people question his arm strength. It may not be the strongest arm, but if you can throw guys open and have great anticipation like a Drew B's, you could be successful on the next level. This is work for him earlier to this very guy. The freshman score on this double screen look pumping one way and coming back the other so a second down in 18 now looks a little bit more manageable as a third down and medium keep your eye on the outside receiver Matt Miller have a ton of success shoemaker out there trying to get a block 
Lotu Lele right there, but a missed tackle, another missed tackle, three missed tackles, four missed tackles by this UNL defense, UNLV defense. That's something that they did a much better job of in that first half. On Lotu Lele's behalf, at least he turned them in back to those red jerseys and give them a chance at third and six now. Swing and nobody out there for DJ Harper. Harper will dive forward and will have enough for a Boise State first down. Nate Carter on the stop, but a little too late. Starting to watch the body language of UNLV, James, and taking a look at what it is they're doing. This is just a swing pass out to the flat with DJ Harper, and he uses his speed. To be able to get the first down, UNLV's got to be able to find a way to get, make a play, get themselves the ball back. They stretch it this time to the right, trying to get outside. And he does just get the edge turn, but not much there for Harper. And has a good job stretching Daniel Harper defensively for UNLV and company. Daniel Harper's their nickel back. He's a walk-on cornerback at USC. Graduated, had some eligibility left. And He's third on this team in tackles. Doug Martin left early in this ball game, Aaron, obviously in pain. Chris Peterson told Brooke at halftime, nothing's wrong with him. We haven't seen him here in the second half, and he is without a doubt one of the best backs in the country. Here's Kellen Moore on second down, and it's almost picked off. Low to Lele, had it in his hands, getting his first start tonight. And what would have been his first interception, but he can't bring it in. That would have been Kellen Moore's sixth interception. And ironically, James, let's remember, as you see Kellen Moore just making a bad decision, trying to get again into the seam on that skinny post, a shoemaker getting a little too greedy, he gets very lucky as Lotu Lele drops the ball. He's remember, Tani Maka is leading this team in receptions. He may have caught that one. Can they get to Moore? One more time, they sacked him once. Here the pressure forces the Heisman hopeful to throw it out of bounds. Alex Glorman was there, and Bo Bell's little brother, BJ, as well. So the UNLV defense stands. They're using some stunts up front to be able to come inside, running crisscrosses to be able to get inside pressure on Kellen Moore. Good job running TEs. And that time, number 92, B.J. Bell doing a good job coming around unblocked because of the penetrator at the three-technique position, which is forces the punt and gets themselves off the ground because of them being able to pressure Kellen Moore. Here's your fate. Boise State trickery in the special teams. It works. First down, Broncos. Ball came out. Boise will keep it, and once again, the smartest man in Boise. That's what Chris Peterson called that young man, J.C. Percy, the backup linebacker, who called his own shot against Colorado State for a successful fake punt. Well, in between the 35 is a perfect place to be able to run the fakes. It's a direct snap. Nobody there to respond for UNLV. That has to be something that you see on film, and if it's there, you can make the call. Trick plays aren't trick plays. They're about execution, and Boise State executed beautifully on that last one, keeps themselves alive. Back to the ground, bending it back, and here's a first down on a running play for D.J. Harper. Aaron, they asked him after Coach Peterson, after the Colorado State game, do you feel comfortable giving Putting that in the hands of one of your players on special teams, the ability to check off and call a fake. He said, when you're the smartest man in Boise, like J.C. Percy, absolutely I do. That's Ifa in motion. And they power again. Wow, that is what you expect from the run game with these guys from Boise, Idaho, the number five team in the nation, trying to add to a 28-14 lead. Tonight's red zone being brought to you by Verizon. We're here at Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. UNLV taking on the number five team in the nation, the Boise State Broncos. And their quarterback, Kellen Moore, who with a win tonight will become the winningest quarterback in college football history.
I backs behind him and the handoff to Harper again. That offensive line starting to have a little bit of fun as they pick up another first down. Now let's remember these are the same offensive line for Boise that got stymied against the same defensive line in front seven for UNLV. The difference, James, is attitude. When you get some moxie, you get some momentum going, which is what Boise State has, and certainly running a special play and being able to get the first down on a fourth down to keep yourself alive. When you look at UNLV, it seems like their spirit is broken. They've got to be able to find a way to dig deep, get this ball back, and that's very hard to do for a young team against the number five team in the country. Chandler Koch is healthy finally, and he's back in the game. He will lead on this power run game one more time for D.J. Harper. Koch, the junior, was dinged up early in the season. James Dunlap on the tackle, a three-yard pickup as Boise trying to punch it in here. Well, we heard from Chris Peterson at halftime about what they needed to do. And that's control the line of scrimmage, and so far, the, as the third quarter comes to an end, Boise State's done just that on the offensive side of the ball. D.J. Harper, when we come back, will look perhaps for his 21st career touchdown in the top 10 at Boise State. That'll do it for a three. You're watching Primetime Football presented by Discover Car. To start quarter number four, and there's a look at the score by quarter. Here, first play of the fourth quarter. Kellen Moore and the Broncos trying to punch it in and make it a 35-14 lead. Not this time, though. Pass intended for Boldevine. And broken up nicely there, Sidney Hodge, the sophomore cornerback. There's Geraldo Boldevine, big, good-looking 6'4, 204 pound receiver. Great job that time of putting the ball right where he needs to be able to put it for Kellen Moore. Just goes right through the hands of Boldevine and then very good and tight coverage by Hodge. And again, aggressive cornerback play as they go naked and empty again. Boldevine, one of the three players from the Netherlands. Knocked away one more time. Is it caught on the deflection? Yes. Oh, my goodness. What a play by Lotu Lele, who cannot buy a break tonight in his first career start. And Tyler Shoemaker comes up with his 11th career touch or touchdown catch of the season, Rath. Who took the breath out of you, James? Didn't a great job by Lotu Lele there, but sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And I tell you what, you're absolutely right. Boise State, the ball has bounced their way. That's a couple times that Previous Lotu Lele has really had his hands on balls. There would have been turnovers where they didn't come up with them. There was, there was a flag thrown early in the game where he did a great job of running down a tight end. They called interference. It was an, an iffy call. Dropped a sure interception right in his mitts. This one would have been a heck of a catch as it was fired in there. Look at the reaction up top from Sidney Hodge. He just takes a seat. Hey, sometimes, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Les Miles in those LSU Tigers, always a perfect example. Everybody talks about what a great coach Nick Saban is. And it's the guy who always seems to get lucky. Les Miles in LSU on the road After tonight. The ruling on the field has been confirmed. Touchdown. You're absolutely right. People say what they want to about Les Miles. He's a tremendous coach, and there's no denying that it factor that LSU has. They just have a knack of coming out on the right side of being lucky every single time. And when you do that, James, it's not luck. And it's also a team that plays very loose, just like their head man. It was without a doubt one of the loosest <laughs> gooses. In ball. Trouble there, and this extra point try is blocked. UNLV refuses.
to just fold up the tent. Can they do anything offensively, though, for the first time in the second half? When we come back to Sam Boyd Stadium, number five, Boise State and UNLV, presented by Discover. Finishing up a great day of college football here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Join us next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern for a football showdown as Rutgers and Army battle it out at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. It's college football exclusively on CBS Sports Network. Wonder if they'll still have $18 steak sandwiches there in Yankee Stadium. Just like they do with the Yankees. Nice Peter Max display for football fans to check out as well. And there you see the other big games over the years. The last couple of years in, in the new Yankee Stadium. It was a one versus two there back in the 40s. Twin year old school Notre Dame. First time tonight we've seen Deontay Purvis run it back and there's a flag well away from the ball. And Purvis looks a little bit gimpy. And the best return man in the Mountain West Conference rather right now. Return. Holding number 20 to the return team. That will be enforced from the end of the run. 10 yards, first down. James, it's going to be really interesting to see what offensive coordinator Rob Finnessy dials up. You know, they're down here by 21 points. Herring hasn't taken any shots downfield, really. They're a run based offense, but they've got to be able to do something to get some offense generated. Now, did you play in that that game in 1946, uh, Notre Dame number one against Army number two at Yankee Stadium? No, I was second string that week. OK, OK. Was, was Johnny Ludak, was it was he really that good of a teammate? Johnny, it was actually Johnny Ludak. Johnny Ludak <laughs> was his cousin. <laughs> So one more try now for the sophomore Herring who took a pop to the knee earlier had to be helped off the field but battling back here in the Battleborn state of Nevada a California kid as is Deonze Bradford the young running back a lot of young pups on Bobby Howe the second year head coach his team here the Rebels. And so far tonight, UNLV's three for ten on third down, and when you only get two yards on first down, it significantly decreases your chances. Play pass, it's really not fooling anybody there, and maybe a late hit. Pop, yes, it is. A free first down. As Caleb Herring took a shot after he threw the football. And it looked like Chong Achu or Tommy Smith in there with the pressure and for the second time tonight trainers all around the sophomore. Number 33 Tommy Smith the linebacker junior. Keep an eye on the right side of your screen. There's all setting fouls on the play. We have personal foul. Defense illegal contact. Holding number 88 offense. Penalty's all set. Replay first down. Wow. It's Anthony Vidal. Number, Second down. Number 88, the tight end for UNLV. What UNLV is doing tonight to be able to take and be able to block that active front of the Broncos doing a lot of slide protections. They're leaving tight ends in to block and they're sliding away, which means the running backs have to block the end like we're seeing right there, but there's just too much pressure. You hope that Herring's okay. They go high and low on the quarterback. So again, back to check in. Well, just a few moments ago, and we've seen this already tonight. Bobby Houck out there with that training staff to help the sophomore quarterback up. Not as Good looking as he was last time when he got off the field under his own power. So here's a guy who started two games this year, Sean Riley, and he hands off to Deontay Bradford. We'll bring up a third down with this new quarterback. And, and, and as we're dealing with these injuries, and we have a quick chance, front page news, obviously Kellen Moore in the sports section this week, but back in Boise, uh, front page news all week. Mark Nearman, just a, just a, a terrible accident 
hit by a truck at 35 miles an hour, survived a severed aorta. And just our prayers to Mark Nearman as he's watching us tonight and, and, and getting better. And, and a shout out to that St. Al's trauma team, the hospital there in Boise. Please pray, pray for our guy back in Boise. You get better, Mark. Here you go, UNLV. Riley letting it fly. The Juco transfer lobs it up there. And a good job on the coverage by Ebo McKende. Evan Ezer on one of the better receivers in the Mountain West Conference, the career touchdown leader, Philip Payne, here at UNLV. Yeah, the safety, George Iloka, obviously had enough time to be able to come over there and be able to help out with that nine wedge that got thrown. But you just hope that Caleb Herring's okay. And again, our prayers go out to you, Mark. Get better, buddy. So here's the Mountain West Conference leading punt returner with a chance finally, Mitch Burroughs. Good job covering. Excellent job covering. That's the way you want to get after it. Stay in your lanes, close the lanes, surround the ball carrier with your shoulders square. That was textbook coverage that time by UNLV. Bobby Houck, the special teams coordinator. Remember the end of the summer, everybody building up for Oregon, LSU, and this one in Atlanta. The Georgia Bulldogs, were they back? Well, they had to take on Boise State to find out. Kellen Moore threw an early interception, but then he turned it around. A 35-21 final. The senior quarterback goes 28 of 34, and it really wasn't even that close. And you take a look at the first four opponents, all leaders in their conferences. Tulsa, a game really that, that, that wasn't that close either there on the blue turf. And here's a free play for Moore. Maybe not as they don't throw a flag. Wow, DJ Harper down there on the field running hard. Down there, the third member of our crew, Brooke Collins. Well, guys, yeah, it, uh, it didn't look good for Caleb as he came off the field. He went over, he sat down on the bench with some trainers. They put a jacket over him. He's kind of leaning forward. And one of the trainers then put his finger up, try to, try to have him follow him with his eyes. He just looks like he's really Kind of got rocked, so no, no no complete news on if he's coming back, leaving, but he just looked a little out of it. All right, well, thank you, Brooke, and we'll check back in. Sean Riley threw that last incomplete pass there on third down. DJ Harper's feeling it, baby. Whoa. Puts it back across the green. Going to try to get the corner. Yes, he will. Touchdown, DJ Harper. <laughs> After going east and west for about 20, it's north and south, 36 yards to Paydirt for number seven. Well, James, that's where aggressiveness and flying to the football can hurt you. A little bit too much pursuit that time by UNLV's defense. DJ Harper with great vision and burst, able to cut across the grain. UNLV with that pursuit last week got in trouble against Colorado State and they got hit on a big reverse for the same thing. Great job of executing that by DJ Harper with his great vision. We've seen two running backs here tonight and it used to be a one-two punch. DJ Harper went through a few knee injuries. Looks like he's back. Boise State on top big. And back here at Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. Last time Kellen Moore and the Boise State Broncos came to town. It was for the Las Vegas Bowl at the end of his junior year last year. And they took it to the Utah Utes. And eight wins later after this one. All said and done with a 41-14 lead right now. It's looking pretty good. Kellen Moore will become the winningest quarterback in FBS college football history. UNLV's got to act fast, though, if they want to try to steal that from his clutches. Well, and of course, Kellen is going to be one of our Geico difference makers here tonight. Well, it's the second game this season that he's had five touchdown passes. He's made some tremendous plays with his arms. Even though he's had a lot of drops tonight from his receivers, he's really been 
extremely accurate throwing the football. And then the other side of the ball, Caleb Herring, before getting knocked out of the game, had a tremendous first half, was able to make some throws, make some plays with his feet. And I think the young man has grown up from week to week, and that's what you want to see out of your young quarterback. You just hope the young man's okay. Brooke Collins gave us a report. Wasn't sure if we'd see him again. And well, you got Sean Riley. And the offense going backwards right now. Tyrone Crawford and that defensive line starting to heat it up. Jonathan Brown in there as well. Part of growing up, James, is when the game's out of hand like it is now, being down by the margin that they are. <laughs> Notre Dame education, 27, baby. 27, 27. <laughs> <laughs> That's Notre Dame education for you, Aaron Taylor. Wow. You were brave, though, to try to do oh, it on the fly. Oh, buddy. Ooh, second down and long here. And Riley just slinging it out there, going for Payne. And Philip Payne on his back tried to haul it in after he got a hand on it just to knock it down. Ball thrown a little high and hard. This ties in right to what I was saying before the math got me in trouble. When teams are young, you have to believe that you're always going to win and have a shot. We saw Shoemaker in that exact same situation in the end zone come down with the ball. If you're UNLV, even though the game seems seemingly out of hand you have to play like you still have a shot to win because this margin is certainly overcomable a lot of teams have done it but young teams have to be able to believe in themselves and find ways to get it done again Riley standing in there strong and just throwing it up into double coverage so a tough crack at it here for Sean Riley the transfer from Saddleback College a mid-year signee that went through spring practice last year with Bobby Houck and company. Bobby Houck, an avid fly fisherman up in Montana. When he wasn't winning ball games with the Grizz, he was out there on the streams catching trout, catching more trout than Kellen Moore's quarterback coach, Brent Pease. <laughs> the, the, the battle of the trout fishermen going on all week long on those conference calls and meetings. Looks like Kellen may be done. And one more try for a return. This time it's Potter equally as dangerous. A big old block and it springs it. There is a flag right where that block happened though. Chris Potter took it to the house. Boise State fans up on their feet, but they'll have to sit back down and watch some offense. That was Mike Clawson, who's down, the former quarterback, now plays free safety for him. See Potter, it's a left return right there. Doing the return, personal five, return team, number 25. That would be enforced at the spot of the foul, 15 yards. First down, boys. Hunter White, the nickelback, number 25. Yeah. Right there. That's tough. Hunter. Aaron, I mean, he 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 tattoos him, but he hits him right in the chest, it seems. And, and his head seemingly was in front. I agree with you. I, I know that the officials are trying to keep players safe and as a father and a former football player that wakes up every day in pain I'm all for it. But that looked like a clean shot to me. Well the shot of the, the training staff laughing with Mike Clawson that's that right there can can let us all breathe of course as, as he does pop up. You know this is this is football. This is football right here. This is the coaches go back and, and take a look at it. I mean. That's this is the this is the kind of aggressive play you want and here we're going to see it. I look to be a block in the back there and here's the shot Mike Claus got to get your shoulder square get your head on a swivel Mike. Oh that's. That's a, that it, that's 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 a tough call on Hunter White that's a, that's a, a clean block and it's also a block too where he did go low he did go to the shoulder pads he did not target ahead if that's what they are calling but if you know basically what it looks like is hey there's a knockout shot one that used to fire up a team and now you hold your breath because you're scared that there's going to be a flag come down and 
with the ball cap on. Looks like we've seen the last of the senior from Prosser, Washington, Kellen Moore. Five touchdowns tonight for Kellen Moore. Who, if things stay the way that they are, will be the all time winningest quarterback in NFL history. The lefty doing a tremendous job putting the ball right on the money and creating some ability for his receivers to run after the catch. And then sometimes you got to be more lucky than good as Shoemaker came down with that last one. Well, now we get Southwick. We saw Grant Hedrick, backup quarterback, in there earlier, who's a runner, and rolling here and dumping it off, completing a pass to the fullback. Caught. Now, you, you jumped ahead a little bit. Just a senior, you said all time winningest NFL quarterback, and, and that opens up a, a, an interesting discussion. I, it, it's good that we went I, there. I, I think my brain's still a little mussy from trying to subtract 14 from 41 a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> oh, along with Aaron Taylor, I'm James Bates. Glad to have you with us on this college football Saturday evening from Las Vegas, Nevada. We've got Brooke Collins down on the field here at Sam Boyd Stadium. An outstanding day of football. We've seen a lot of records go down. Quarterbacking records. Two of them here on CBS Sports Network. Case Keenum. Finally stepping in front of Timmy Chang earlier today on CBS Sports Network as Houston stays undefeated and Kellen Moore. There he is. About to become the winningest quarterback in the history of college football. One of the most unassuming young men you'll ever meet. If you saw him walking down the street with a ball cap on, you wouldn't recognize him. But man, is he a great, great college football player. So again, the pass, Matt Miller, and Southwick hooks up with the freshman who has two completions. Our primetime football game, or two touchdown receptions, I should say, primetime football game brought to you by Discover Card. It, 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 and you're right, Aaron, you know, joked earlier, he looks, he looks like he could be the water boy. And, and he looks exactly like he did the baby face when he was a freshman. You know, going back and reading some, some old articles from when he, his younger days there in Boise, he actually said, I had so much fun there at Prosser High School for the Mustangs playing for my dad. And everybody, that's all everybody wanted to be was a Mustang. I never even thought about the next step until late in my senior year. And it's sincere, and you get the same feeling that that's what he's dealing with right here. He is enjoying playing and winning football games. This is, a, this is a special, special kid, whether he ever plays it down in the NFL or not. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is, is one of the best college football players ever to come through. You talk to coaches all across this, this college football landscape, you know, at all levels, scouts, and they just talk about the accuracy and the ability to throw off balance. Just, just a very, very impressive quarterback and one heck of a winner. I agree with you. There's several NFL scouts that are here tonight from the Cardinals, the Panthers, the Bears, the Dolphins, the Titans, all looking at several players for this Boise team. But Kellen Moore certainly is one of those players that they came tonight to see. False start. Number 78 offense, five yard penalty, still first down. And when you talk about some of the attributes of Kellen Moore, what it is that he brings to the table, first of all, He's a heady player. As a coach's son, he sees the entire field. He's very accurate. His location of the football, throwing guys open, anticipation, football IQ, extremely calm under pressure, gets rid of the football. And the most important stat that counts is he's a winner. And throwing the ball left-handed, it comes out a little bit differently, and a little bit harder for the DBs and people on the back end to kind of see where that trajectory is coming from. And defensively, Everything's flip-flopped on your sprint outs and all the different packages that you do when you move the throwing location for the quarterback. And there you see the career active FBS rankings. And, and, and the fact coming into tonight, he was sacked once tonight, that he was only sacked three times coming in. That's Peyton Manning-ish. And it's not just a great offensive line, which they have, but it's also a quarterback that knows before he gets that ball where he's going to go with it and what the defense is trying to do to him. Yeah, it doesn't stay in his hand very long at all. So here's Bradley Randall. Remember, serving a one-game suspension, five UNLV Rebels, including 
Tim Cornette, who has started a few games at tailback. Also, Tony Maka, an outstanding up and coming linebacker for Bobby House, defensive side of the ball. UNLV going a little bit of hurry up. Really impressed with what Bobby Houck has done with this team. The tenacity. I mean, you got to understand, when you talk about front fours and front sevens, they don't get much better in college football than what Boise State brings to the table. And Tyrone Crawford, Billy Wynn, Shea McClellan, those guys will be on NFL rosters. And there were three true freshmen on that left side of that offensive line that had their way with the front seven in that first half. Pass incomplete there. But well, you know what? And there's depth. When you talk about that defensive line for Boise State, they go eight deep. Yep. They have got some big athletic bodies. It, 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 and it's and it's really now across the field, up and down the roster. It's it's a it's a unique chip on your shoulder kid that, you know, it's they get that from their coaching staff. But at what point do we say, hey, this is not a fluke, this is a heck of a football program? in Boise, Idaho. I, I've been singing their praises since I first saw them play up live. They are a good football team. Everybody's got good skill players, but what makes Boise good, what's allowed them to have the success that they've had, James, is offensive and defensive linemen. That's been the key. And when you look at the schools that have, quote unquote, busted the BCS, the TCUs, the Utahs, and right here, Coach Peterson and the Boise States, they've done it not only with great skill players, but with solid and consistent offensive and defensive lines. And they've been a beneficiary of, of the scholarship reductions. I think that that's led greatly to what we're seeing in the emergence of these non AQ programs competing on the national level. Lansford bunts it away. One more try here for Pop. And he's run out of bounds. Chris Peterson, by the way, there is a flag down, though. Doing the return. Personal foul. Face mask. Kicking team, number 88. 15 yards from the end of play. First there. All right. And we'll be. Back here to Sam Boyd Stadium for our football game presented by Discover right after this break. And we're back. A look at the Macy's play selection for the number five team in the nation, Boise State. And a lot of the success, Aaron, coming in the second half. Yeah, they were shut down pretty good. UNLV came to play in that first half with like a good veteran team. They figured it out at halftime. Here's Drew Wright, new running back in there, takes a handoff from Joe Southwick. Southwick actually had to come in. A little bit of a scare against Toledo way back early in the season on the road. Kellen Moore had a, a record night that night, but tweaked his knee a little bit early in the game. And now it's Hedrick, the redshirt freshman. Just the formation with motion. Quarterback deep. You know what? That's low to Lele. Uh, yes. Hey, Thank good you. job. Good job. It, it, filling in first career start and has played his tail off here tonight. Dang, you hate to see that late as Grant Hedrick takes the pop and is slow to get up. You're right, James. You were an all SEC linebacker for the University of Florida. You know good linebacker play, and we watched a very good one tonight in John Lotulele. So sudden with good eyes and vision, he's able to diagnose and react to plays extremely quickly. Plays with good pad level. Heck of a player. And with good hair. <laughs> well, there you have it. TCU. Well, every time those two get together, it's a great one. And they've only met three times, and all three meetings have been in bowl games in the last eight years. And it, it's not that easy, though. The rest of the schedule in the Mountain West Conference for Boise State. 
They'll go to Montezuma Mesa and then host the Wyoming Cowboys who are a little bit of a surprise. And we update some scores in our BCS top 10. Boise dropping a spot in this week's poll behind Stanford after their big overtime win over USC. Arkansas victorious over the head ball coach in the South Carolina Gamecocks early today. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens with Alabama, James. Very tight game today. Kicking woes really what lost that game for him. The Mad Hatter finds a way to pull another one out of his hat, and they got it. The computers love Boise State. We put that graphic up about their first four opponents. Their strength of schedule, I think, is a lot tougher than people give them credit for. Certainly the human voters. But the human voters still gave them some love. They were five last week, and the computers have them four. But where Alabama ends up with that one loss, we're really going to see how much SEC love they want to give to the Crimson Tide. Obviously, a lot of folks in Boise pulling for the guys in Athens who won again today, the Georgia Bulldogs' first win of the year. Well, not often do you get a one versus two. And look at that guy. Mommy, yeah. the Rhino's getting too close to the core. I just scored a touchdown. <laughs> Aaron Taylor played in a one versus two. And your boy Batesy did as well. So how about that? That's that's something that, that you gotta be proud of up here. How, how many announced teams have both played in a number one versus number two matchup like we had today in Tuscaloosa? Exactly. And, and how many of those, both of those guys won that game? Uh, uh, Come on now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, or was I the only one that won? <laughs> all, all seriousness, you know? We we bring that. And here's our man, Jiffy Jeff, who's a big OU Sooner. And actually, you know what? Played for Bobby Stoops there as we went to Tallahassee and lost. Special teams was the difference there. Special teams, really the difference today. Some missed field goals for Alabama. But, you know, here we, we get a chance to come and see great players like Kellen Moore. These kids playing, like Lotu Lele, playing so hard. But also to have a chance to have been a part of something so special on the college football grand stage like that. It's I know it's something that I'll always cherish. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, the players on the field for Florida State when we played them, they came in number one. Time Charlie out, Ward. The first short time I'll just have. Work, work done. Derek Brooks, Derek Washington. I mean, they had some ballers on their team. And it was one of those games. I got to be honest, we beat them in South Bend. Had we been on the road, I don't know if we had won that game. And to me, that speaks to what LSU was able to do today in Tuscaloosa. You know, I was thinking about LSU and Alabama earlier this week and trying to find who has the advantage. You know, they're, they're so close in so many categories. And one thing that, that gave me the chills and it's, it's giving me goosebumps again right now as I think about it, as much fun as it is to play in front of your hometown fans that love you, you're riding that bus from the hotel to the game, to the stadium, and everyone's waving at you, telling you you're number one. There is something so special about riding with your guys that you've worked so hard with for so many years, and it's you against the world. And that's what we played in in Tallahassee. In enemy territory, it's almost like the movie Gladiator, where everybody wants to see you go down. And that's what LSU had today. That's a special thing about college football, too. Oh, man, there's no question. I remember that year that we played Florida State. The TV truck showed up early. There was reporters from different countries that showed up early, and there was a lot more on-campus distractions that week. And, and I wondered if LSU was at an advantage because they weren't home. They didn't have to deal with all the extracurricular media attention that was kind of congregating in Tuscaloosa. If that was one less distraction that they had to deal with in the Crimson Tide. but. They had a lot more problems with their special teams today than they had with the media, I assure you that. And how about, how about, you know, hey, distractions are something too that you, you rarely talk about. This is a team now in Boise State that no longer just sneaks up on everybody like they did back in the Fiesta Bowl against Oklahoma, where they came out of no year and one of the, where one of the greatest bowl games in the history of college football. Now everybody gives them their best shot. And this year they're starting to deal with some of the peripheral stuff that, that comes along with it, the distractions, the NCAA, uh, ineligibility issues, some suspensions. And you know, in all the talk, the Big East, perhaps a move there for Chris Peterson. Everybody wants to talk about everything. These records with Kellen Moore, they've handled the distractions. LSU 
Lost a lot of great players on the defensive side of the ball. They handled that. They handled the big fight with Jordan Jefferson. The suspension's there. And then, of course, the Honey Badger was suspended last week. And what's even more impressive to me is the way they folded Jordan Jefferson back into the offense and didn't allow that to become a distraction. Absolutely. Well, definitely, Chris Peterson, a guy with some know-how when it comes to winning football games. And that takes us to our Napa play of the game. Boy, oh, an empty set gets the snap. He's blitzed, throws the ball down the middle. It's caught by Shoemaker at the 30, and he will steam into the end zone. Touchdown, 51 yards to Tyler Shoemaker. It's 27 to 14. Well, thank you, Bob Beeler and the Bronco Radio Network, KBOI. Back in Boise, and he's just hollering out the name of Drew Wright, the junior running back, an Idaho kid getting into the paint here, 15 yards out to add to this lead for Boise State. Great job blocking up front that time, obviously, for Boise State. That UNL de UNLV defense with a broken spirit played hard for two and a half quarters, but in the end, their youth and inexperience gave way to a veteran Boise State team. Well, Doug Martin, the starter, Injured early in this game, D.J. Harper ran hard, and this does number three right getting into the action. You're watching CBS Sports Network. Engine for the real world. By Napa. Napa know-how. And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com for a free rate quote. How about that shot? Look at the sea of red at the quote unquote neutral site that Boise State opened this season, just like last year with <laughs> chewing a big wad of gum there, Kellen Moore. Of course, number 19 at the time, Georgia sitting about that same ranking right now. Boise State going in there and handling the Georgia Bulldogs. First win ever for this program over an SEC school. Three touchdowns on the night for Moore. Here's Deontay Purvis who doesn't look like he's full speed right now. Rebels still playing hard. And five consecutive wins for these Boise State Broncos over teams from BCS conferences in seven of the last eight. Like we said, when given a chance on the big stage, they've taken care of business. Coming up next, it's Inside College Football. Adam Zucker and Brian Jones will get you all caught up with the scores and highlights from around the country. It's Inside College Football, and it's exclusively on CBS Sports Network. I wonder what color tie BJ's got on tonight. Oh, Mike, I'll bet he doesn't have socks on to match, though. <laughs> he wears pantyhose sometimes, sheer pantyhose. <laughs> you guys you guys have a good time in there during the week, that's for sure. And here are our early game headlines. We told you those Arkansas Razorbacks rolling at home. Their only loss this season is on the road to the Crimson Tide, where LSU won today. And how about Pat Fitzgerald? Northwestern team going to Lincoln. And Nebraska looked so good in back-to-back -back weeks and a little bit of a, a letdown and an upset, to say the least, as they will drop out of that top 10. And of course, we talked about it, LSU just keeps on going. Certainly looks like they will make a run to the national championship game. They're making a nice big run here. Bradley Randall, who was horse collared and pulled down by the defender, Hazen Moss. So 15 yards will be added on to this run by Bradley Randall. Great job of vision just on the belly play, cutting it backside, making people miss in the hole. Some backups in there on defense for Boise State, but I'll tell you what, I gotta be honest. Horstock, number 24 on the defense. Gonna be half the distance of the goal. First down. It's been impressive tonight to watch Bobby Houck's team. I mean, Coach Houck was coaching and, and John at the refs, you know, a couple minutes ago during the timeout. And I think his team takes his lead 
to have a run like this at the end of the game shows that these guys haven't given up, that there's still some fight to them. And he's a guy that is a proven program winner and developer. And this is the perfect type of place for him. And you give him a year or two, and I think that they're going to be a very different UNLV team than we've seen quite some time here in Las Vegas. Here's Riley, his backup quarterback, trying to lob one up there to the all-time leader in career touchdown catches for UNLV, Philip Payne. And they set off some fireworks here with 30 seconds left to go as Philip Payne just caught touchdown number 26 in his career. Philip Payne trying to instill some pain. Great job setting his feet, putting the ball up where his go-to receiver can go to get it. Just out of the reach of the defender and Philip Payne having great awareness getting his feet in. That's why he's UNLV's all time touchdown leader. Great concentration getting that left foot in. Good in college on the next level. Need to get that other one in. Aaron, that ties in nicely with what you had just set up with Bobby Howe, a Western High School graduate right here in Las Vegas. There's a lot of talent here in town. Needs to keep that talent from the Sagebrush State right here at home. And you know what? He did it at, at Montana. Obviously, blue collar kids. And you've got it. So many people have come through here and tried the quick fix with a lot of Juco guys. And you got to have a nice little blend of blue collar, hardworking guys. Like he says, that entire left side of the offensive line, those young kids. So you're right, give this guy a little bit of time, and it's scary what could happen here at Las Vegas. And, and you know, speaking of scary, a lot of parents, justifiably so, oh goodness, I don't know if I want my kid going to school in Las Vegas, but he had a pretty good answer for that when we asked him yesterday. Yeah, he said it's not about where you're at, it's about who you are, and that really spoke to the types of kids that he's recruiting. He told us that, you know, the parents of the kids that we have on our team have already done a good job. And once they come on campus, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, will continue that job that you've done. And it, it was really impressive to me as a young father when I think about I would have time the same Wood. concerns yeah, about sending my kids here. Pass. But you seconds. have to realize campus is away from the strip and once you live here in Vegas, there is no lure there. I mean, that, that place is built designed for money and and, and things that college kids just don't have. And it just hasn't been an issue. It also opens up a lot of opportunities once the playing days are done. People, uh, all UNLV students are able to take full advantage of. And a nice, a truce. They call truce over there. <laughs> Hauk has been on the officiating crew from the get-go here tonight. <laughs> I played with Bobby's brother Timmy in Green Bay and I tell you what his brother plays just like old coach Hauk here coaches and that's with tenacity and passion. His rebel set up for an onside kick and there's a nice looking onside it. kick a perfect one. What? Brandon Baker. Taj, was that Taj Hassan? Yes, Taj Hassan, but Chase Lansford does an excellent job. It's a great job on an onside kick. You want that second bounce to get up in the air to give your guys a chance to be able to run underneath it. Tell you what, there's got to be some sort of kicking onside kick specialist or something that can teach those guys what to do. It's so effective when done well. This gives UNLV the ball again. And again, we talk about this 27 seconds left in this ball game. They're down by 27 points. A little quicker math that yeah, time. That was good. <laughs> he had out his phone, ladies and gentlemen. Puts it on the calculator. That's not true. Antoine Murray there on the stop. And hey, you know, here's another thing, too. Those, those that have left that one versus two, all those college football fans out there wanting to take a peek and see what Boise State and Kellen Moore, what they're all about. They saw a win tonight in the second half. It was close at halftime, but all Chris Peterson and these Broncos, after coming out of the halftime locker room, and congratulations to Kellen Moore, who passes up Colt McCoy tonight and becomes the all-time winningest quarterback 
in college football FBS history as he moves to 46 and two as a starter. Kellen Moore has as much to do with Boise State being number five in the country as his Boise State team is responsible for Kellen Moore being the all time winning as quarterback. What Chris Peterson has created in Boise from the team atmosphere everybody buys into winning and playing together and it not only produces results and wins but it also produces great individual efforts and I think Kellen Moore is certainly a result of that and it couldn't happen to a finer young man who's humble a coach's kid he appreciates and values the game of football and he makes the game and the people around him better and aside from that he's a pretty dang good quarterback he seems to have it all in the palm of his hands married this past summer his brother who was on this team caught a pass from him tonight his best man even won the energy award for the best dancer at practice for coach Peterson this week <laughs> truly does have it all we got to see some dance moves out of this guy tonight Brooke Collins I know you are going to underplay this but history was made today the winningest quarterback in college football what has this journey been like yeah certainly it's been neat uh, very fortunate to be playing here and uh, We've had a lot of great experiences and uh, obviously we're a little focused on some other stuff right now but certainly it's a it's a neat opportunity. You got to do it in front of your family your mom and dad and your wife. How big of a part was your dad to this process as well. Oh, obviously from a football aspect you know that's where I learned the game and he helped me out in so many phases and uh, you know he's always been there for me and you know nothing but the best. And of course your teammates you always you know give them some love too. How did they help you to get to this point. Oh they did a great job you know looking at tonight they made some great plays receivers made some good plays defense did well and certainly it wasn't our, our prettiest effort but uh, you know it's a win and we move on and get better. Uh, you do move on to quite a team TCU does this kind of help you you know a little bit of a relief this is uh, this is past. now you get to just focus on TCU. Yeah certainly we're very excited we, we know what TCU is all about you know we played them a few times we know it's going to be a tough battle they're, they're going to bring their best shot and uh, we got to get prepared this week and see what happens. Go kiss your wife hug your mom and dad congratulations. All right thank you very much. Nice smile from Kellen Moore and it's been so much fun to watch him compete here for his Boise State Broncos and tonight he comes out struggled a little bit in the first half but in the in the second half put it all together and threw five touchdown passes. Yeah he did threw five touchdown passes and wasn't as accurate as he would want to be and normally is but there were a lot of drops tonight and great coverage. You got to credit UNLV but what was interesting to me is in that moment you know he kind of downplayed it and that's the one thing that it kind of saddens me about football that if I could do it all over again I would have enjoyed the moment more a lot of times football dictates that you can't even enjoy what you just did you got to be able to move on and and if I could instill that to anybody I would tell them enjoy the moment more. Well not much time to enjoy this one because a Mountain West Conference Championship on the line in Boise next Saturday as TCU heads to the gem state to take on the Broncos and a young man in Kellen Moore that became the winningest quarterback in the history of college football tonight with a final of 48 to 21 over a hard charging UNLV rebel squad on homecoming in Vegas for Aaron Taylor Brooke Collins and our entire crew I'm James Bates and for scores highlights features and more go to CBSSports.com. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network. So long from Sin City, everybody. We'll see you next week in Hattiesburg.